Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watch Collection. Uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, Agonor, the company and the really the main man behind the company, uh, Jean-Marc Viderec. In uh, 2007, he got the very first watchmaker of the year that the Grand Prix d'Or of DJ Genève gave out. And uh, since that time, he's been doing a lot of stuff, but most people don't know him because what he does is behind the scenes. Uh, years ago, I used to write software and they were little modules uh, that I was hired to write things for and they never had my name on it, okay? <laughs> they had something else. But I, I used to do these little things that apparently other people couldn't do or didn't want to do, probably the latter. Anyway, uh, Jean-Marc Viderec is like having sort of like a, in a, you have somebody who just like a gym, you need something brilliant done and he's the guy to go to and he's certainly done it. And what I'd take, like to take a look at today is sort of a subset of what he has done in terms of award-winning work that he really didn't get much credit for, even though it was because of his work. And, and, and watch, I mean, people who know, know that he was the guy behind it. So let's take a look at some of the things that, uh, uh, these are award-winning only from the Grand Prix. He won all kinds of other awards to watch uh, making awards. All right, uh, the first one is that it was a design award, which is sort of interesting. Uh, and this is for the uh, 2009 uh, Harry Winston Opus 9. And the Opus series by Harry Winston is that what they would do is that they would hire uh, different top-notch watchmakers and they would go out and they'd make a Harry Winston watch. Um, now this is Harry Winston, it's not an Opus though. And uh, the first one was done by F.P. Jorn and they had some of the other top watchmakers uh, do it for them. Well, this was uh, one that he did, and uh, he won a Grand Prix award for it. For, now, he won it for design. I don't know if that included the interior design or not, but in order to have one kind of design on the top, you need a certain kind of movement design uh, below it, and that's one thing that he excels at. Uh, here's an example of that. This is from 2010 in the ladies' watch, and this is one of the coolest watches. Uh, this watch is by Van Cleef and Arpels, and it's called Lover's Bridge. And on the left side, there's a lady with a, an umbrella. And then uh, coming across the other side, on the right side, there's a guy who is, he's got a, he's got a rose behind his back that sticks up. Now that's important, the umbrella and the rose come to be the pointers for the time. Up above her, you can see the hour numbers. And up above him are the uh, minute hours, are the, uh, the minute uh, indexes. I don't know how they did this, but this was incredible. And the hands themselves, you can see that over to the right, are there how they were carved out and so forth uh, to be used as as point as hands, as functional hands in this. Not always the easiest, uh, perhaps, watch to read, but one of the most interesting. One of the things that um, he was asked about this in an interview some time back. He said uh, what he did, does is that he doesn't care whether the people can read the time or not, which is sort of an interesting thing to say. His focus is on getting done what the designer wants to do. And so I, I know designers are not always the most functional thinking people in, uh, in software development. I've dealt with some designers. But no one's going to understand that. They don't care. They want to have their design out there. And that often happens in watches, too. Okay, uh, but this, is, this takes brilliant watchmaking to pull this off. All right, now this one is one of my favorite watches uh, it's by Hermes. It's called uh, Hermes Arco Le Temps Suspendu. And what it does is that in the middle, uh, between 12 and um, 11 on one side and one on the other, sort of like a like a little V cut out, like a piece of pie. And if the, the suspension is set, what'll happen, the uh, hour and minute hand go into that V. 
and everything stops. And so <laughs> that's like, why would you want to do that? Well, I, I don't know. On a, sort of the most romantic notion is that uh, the young lady or, you know, or gentleman are out, they're having a wonderful time and they don't want it to end, so they suspend the time. And then when you undo it, it goes back to the regular time. It's a very ingenious uh, design. And oddly, this won the men's prize. Um, this one's 40 millimeters. There's a woman's version of this, it's 38 millimeters. Instead of having a hand date, it's got a little circular, um, uh, a little circular hand date on it instead. Uh, but this, I mean, just the whole concept of suspending time on a timekeeping device. And of course, uh, Vita Rec was the guy who figured out how to do it for him. And they won uh, the men's prize uh, in 2011. Uh, and uh, 2015, there's something, there was a ladies high mech watch prize uh, that was won. This is a lady Fabergé, a uh, compliqué peacock. And it is compliqué. Uh, the time is told by the peacock's tail and it just sort of starts spreading out. And if you look in the back, you can see it's a legit <laughs> mechanical watch. And around the side, you have the mother of pearl and all these diamonds and jewels, and then this bejeweled peacock with his tail going out to tell the time. Um, maybe not the easiest way to tell time, but boy, what a cool watch. Uh, if my wife had that, I think that it would, it would like, I don't think she'd ever take it off. All right, um, now this next one, this is a calendar prize from 2015. Uh, and it's uh, Hermes Slim to Hermes QP. Hermes somehow thinks that by telling everyone, you know, giving it a, a caliber name, this is uh, the caliber name of this one is H1950. Now, the base of it or the seed of it is a really fabulous movement by Vacher called the 5401. And apparently, uh, Viderec worked with Vaucheur to develop some aspect of this. Uh, you have a 31-day uh, hand date at uh, 12 o'clock, uh, and then at 9 o'clock you have the name uh, dates. This, I believe this is a perpetual calendar. And, uh, and then you have a moon phase, and then down at uh, 6 o'clock you have a another time zone. So you have two time zones. You got all of these incredible things in this uh, watch. Just another watch that um, I just think is, is really very cool. I'd love to have something like this. So now, not only is there a Vacher movement, but there's also uh, the hand of uh, Viderek in there somewhere. Uh, by the way, I think, I, know, I forgot when, uh, 2014 or so, uh, Hermes bought 25% of Vasseur. And so when they talk about it being Hermes manufactured, yeah, they own 25% of the manufacturing company. So I guess it's it's legit. All right, uh, this next one uh, is a Fabergé uh, Visionaire DTZ. That's for dual time zone. And the thing I like about this, on the one hand, it's, if you look at the back, you can see some serious watchmaking going on. And Fabergé doesn't make, has nothing to do with watchmaking itself. So here you have, what you have is, um, is a dual time, a trap for travel time. And the way they did it is, it are, is wholly ingenious, is that you have in the middle, you have a 24 hour clock. Uh, and so like one o'clock is 1300 hours, two o'clock is 14 and so forth. And then around the, the, the face of the watch, you have regular time uh, with your little hand uh, being the hour and a bigger hand being the, uh, 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 the minutes. So this is, this is just, I mean, the ingenuity of it, because you know, Fabergé said, well, this is what we imagine, this is what we'd like. And, uh, 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 Viderec and Aganor is a, were on it. It's just incredibly creative uh, kind of watchmaking. Now this next one uh, really surprised me. 
in that um, it's it, it was done. It's a Parmigiani uh, Tori Chemistry retrograde, and um, the done by Parmigiani, and of course uh, Parmigiani uh, it has the uh, Lachure uh, make their movements, uh, even if they're designed by. Uh, uh, Niso Parmigiani, the watchmaker. But apparently there was something about this that he wanted to uh, involve Viterec. Now I have this watch, except instead of having the the hand date well, with the retrograde hand date, it's just got the little window uh, date, the three date uh, window that uh, Parmigiani has. And so th what I was thinking is uh, uh, the, the, the probably the retrograde aspect of it was what Viterec did, uh, but this is a this is a wonderful watch, believe me. And, I, and like I said, I have the the window version of this watch, and it's just a just fantastic watch. Okay, uh, now this one, this is really interesting. This this won the Chronograph watch prize in 2018. It probably should have won in 2017, but. Uh, some other chronograph one, and then they came out. They, it was called the Singer Reimagined uh, Singer Track One Edition, I think, or Singer something like that. And it was almost the same as this one, except the style was a little different. But it's exactly the same. It had the wholly made uh, Agenor uh, Mark Viterec movement inside, called the Agengraph, which is just just incredible. Uh, movement that's been around for a while, uh, incredible chronograph movement that just unlike anything. Uh, Singer is a car company, by the way, and they had, <laughs> I don't know how they got into watchmaking, but they did. And uh, this is a, a an amazing uh, watch, and it certainly deserved to win. And I think the reason it didn't win the year before and it did uh, in 2018 was people are saying, are you nuts? <laughs> the judge is probably... Got like, come on, yeah. Anyway, who knows? All right, uh, let's go on. Now that was that was the last time, uh, 2018, which is like oh, last year, <laughs> that Peter Rick had a had a winning one in it. And the thing about Agenor's watch baking is that it shows up in different places, and, and that's what that's what is the fun thing to find if you can find it. Um, I, I have on my uh, my Harry Winston uh, premiere bio uh, by retrograde, and by retrograde you can see there at uh, at three o'clock the days of the week uh, go down, then pops back up again. Uh, but at nine o'clock we're truly busy. I don't know if you can see it. You probably can't. Uh, on here the seconds go down every thirty seconds. They whoop, boom. So the minute is two rotations of the second hand. They're not rotations, they're, they're retrogrades. They go like that. It's sort of fun to watch. And um, uh, so Harry Winston never did make movements at all, nothing. And uh, I, I found out, I, I got a hold of the people at uh, Jard Perigo, and uh, they were able to show me that this was a, thing was running on a Jard Perigo movement. But what about the retrograde? I mean, who did that? And so I contacted um, Agenor in uh, Switzerland and got a wonderful letter back uh, from uh, one of uh, Mark Viterek's son, who's also in the business. And he sent me this um, diagram, and it's called the AG2351. And that's uh, that's what's running my, uh, my retrograde disc. You can see the plate, and it goes, that's sort of from the uh, uh, front view, I think. And it goes on top of the uh, movement, and <laughs> I don't know how the rest of it's done, but it works wonderfully well. Uh, now this final one is one that, I think they're, they're taking pre-orders on it now. Uh, Fiona uh, Kruger, uh, I met, I think it was last year at the, um, uh, what time show in New York? You see, my wife started talking about the skulls because they were from the Day of the Dead, and she had, uh, uh, Kruger had spent some time in South America and Mexico, I think. And this is where she sort of brought in that aspect of the artwork. 
And then when, when this came out, I thought, oh, my God, that is the, you know, what's the point, you know? Well, it, the notion of entropy is, is a very interesting one. And it's, it's sort of the opposite of order. And it's sort of this, the watches represent something exploding in the middle of explosion, creating uh, disorder or entropy. And I, the more I looked at it, the more I liked the blasted thing. I, I almost hate to admit it because I have what, you know, this is, you know, I suppose it's like getting used to a Jackson Pollock painting. But you can see the way the indexes along the top look like little blast uh, lines. And so I, uh, the reason I wanted to find out about it is that a week or so ago, we had a video on a company called Opium, uh, O-P-H-I-O-N. And they used a, a movement by, oh God, what's the name of that? Uh, uh, Tex, Tex, Tech something uh, that was uh, made movements, and they were really cool movements. And Fiona uh, Kruger was using the same movements in her uh, uh, hand wound versions. And so I thought, well, I wonder what 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 she what she changed to um, once that happened. This is a whole long story uh, to that movement. Uh, the other one, uh, techno time, yeah, techno time. I think it was called. So, um, you know, so what was going instead? I found out what she did is that she designed the watch with the whole concept of entropy and um, went to Vitarek and said, could you put together a movement to go with this? And he did. And so the entire movement is by Vitarek. And it's called, cal the caliber name is Chaos One. And, uh, and looking at it, uh, it's just like, so it becomes more and more interesting. I, I think a lot of us, you know, we want something nice and conventional, like, um, oh, this is pretty conventional. <laughs> I, I guess not too conventional, my Beauvais, but at least it's got a dial that's pretty conventional. There's nothing conventional about this. And like Peter Wick said, he didn't care whether people can see it or not. He wants, he wants to develop something that realizes the designer's idea of this so anyways this, <laughs> i don't know uh by the way too these things start at uh, twenty six thousand, and that's in i think just stainless steel so it's, there there's not something that uh is it's not for everyone but boy i tell you uh like i said I, i'm gonna take a close look at this so uh, when we go they're having a uh, watch time show you know, shortly in new york and i want to find out more about it. i'll take a bunch of pictures and have some wrist shots when i come back Okay, well, listen, um, take a look at your watches and find out. Say, hey, maybe there's a piece of Vitarec uh, in mine like I found in my Harry Winston. Uh, you never know because all of these other ones are mess and uh, are pelts I knew about. and But some of these other ones, I thought, wow, I didn't realize he was doing stuff with that. Anyhow, um, having a really, really a breathtaking uh, collection on Sunday that I think you're going to like a lot. And until then, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side. And if you like, this is an opportunity to subscribe.